point of this video is to get us prepared for our next topic, which is special right triangles. This video is going to talk about radical equations, which used to be a very big deal in Algebra 1, but with changes to curriculum, it's not as big of a deal now. There are quite a few ways to solve radical equations that you will probably hear more about in Algebra 2. For the sake of being able to understand the geometry material, I'm going to just focus on one way to solve. When we look in here, I just want to make sure we understand radical is just the same word that we use for the square root symbol. So in the equations we're going to look at, they're going to have a square root in there. Just like with any equation, we have to do the opposite to solve, and the opposite of finding the square root is to actually square the sides. Our first two examples are going to be very, very basic. We're just going to go over how to get rid of the square root symbol. What we want to do is we need to do the same thing to both sides, which is going to be squaring both sides. Now the right side is going to be a little bit easier to solve because most of us know that 8 squared is 64. Just to make sure we have a reminder, again, the opposite of a square root sign is a square sign, so when I do that, these two symbols are completely gone and I'm only left with x. If I were to plug in the value back into the equation, that would make perfect sense. The square root of 64 is 8. Another basic thing to know about radicals is when you have two terms being multiplied. This is something that will happen in the problems that we do, so I want to go over how we solve those. We do the same thing that we did the last time, which is we need to put our square symbols. Now, when we square more than one term that's being multiplied, we need to distribute the square. So we need to make sure we have 4 squared. We also need to make sure we have the square root of x squared. When we do that, we're left with 16 times x because 4 squared is 16. The square root of x squared is just x. 8 squared is 64. We just solve it like a one-step equation. We end up with x equals 4. Again, if I were to plug back in 4, I would see that 4 times the square root of 2, sorry, sorry, the square root of 4, which is 2, equals 8. Now, these first two examples were done mostly to show you a couple key principles. Number one, that when we square a square root, they cancel out, and also what to do when we have two numbers being multiplied. Example 3 is a closer fit to what you're going to be seeing on the next day of class. In example 3, we notice that under the radical is now a number. This is going to be apparent in special right triangles. We still do the same thing that we did on all the other problems. We want to make sure we square both sides. On the left side, we have two terms being multiplied, so we definitely want to distribute the square here, the square here. That's going to leave us with 7x equals four, uh, 7x squared equals 49 because x to the second is over here as well. We want to isolate the variable by dividing. So x squared is equal to 7. I want to take the square root of each side. Therefore, x equals the square root of 7. When we go back to the problem, that makes sense. The square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is the same thing as square root of 7 squared. And that comes up with our answer. You will hear me use these two terms in class. I call this exact form, which means that I'm not doing any rounding because obviously the square root of 7 is not a perfect square. It is going to give you a weird decimal. And I might also call it radical form because I'm keeping the radical in the problem. Now, I would say 80 to 90 percent of your special right triangle problems will look like this. I don't think that they're terribly hard. They might be a little messy, but because you can leave things in exact form or radical form, it won't be a big deal. Where things will get messy is a problem like this. In this problem, we have radicals on both sides, and they have different numbers. When that happens, it does tend to get a little messier, but it's still the same process we did before. We want to take each side and square it. And because there's two terms on each side, we are going to need to make sure that we always distribute that too. That tends to be a mistake students make quite often, is not distributing the exponent, which is why I'm focusing on that a lot. When I look at this side, 5 squared is 25, and then square root of 3 squared is going to be just 3. So on this side, I have 25 times 3. On this side, I'm going to have x squared times 2. You could also write that as 2x squared. And I believe that's what I did here when I simplified. 25 times 3 is 75. Again, we just want to go through and solve. 
Now I do get a decimal here, but because it's a terminating decimal, meaning it's not repeating and it's not irrational where it kind of has weird unrepeating numbers, I'm going to leave it alone as it is. That means when I get my final answer, the answer is x equals square root of 37.5. So each of these four examples give you good background to understand how to solve radical equations, which is something that you're going to need to know how to do to do special right triangles. Before we get into special right triangles, though, I do want to make sure we really understand this skill since it's something that did not show up in your Algebra 1 course last year, but your Algebra 2 teachers are going to expect you know, as well as when we do special right triangles, I'm going to expect you know that as well. So tomorrow in class we will do some practice. What I'd like you to do is to pause the video and solve the three equations that I have here. We will start class by going over the three examples.